And what the heck is that for? <laughs> I've actually had a couple of questions, and you know what? I put it on here, and I didn't really know until just this week as I started studying it and uh, looking at it. This has all all is bleh, bleh. this is all about surge trap trapping the surge of metal that comes through here. And we're going to take a look at a video that I saw from a guy named uh, his channel is Andrew Martin. I'm going to call him Andy because we've been talking back and forth on email a number of times, and Andy, Andy, Andy is the way we, we call him. I call him so. Andy. His channel's Andrew. Call him Andy. Anyway, he has got um, some pretty fascinating stuff he's been doing with glass-fronted uh, molds, and I just want to show you. I want to take you to one of his videos. He knows about it. He's okay that I'm showing it to you. Uh, and we're going to step through it, and I'm going to show you some things that, that I saw when I watched his video. And I want to point out to you, and then we're going to talk about why the surge trap. So let me just let's go over to my laptop, and we'll look at what, uh, uh, what Andy's got. All right, so this is right about the middle of, towards the end of his, eh, I don't know, two-thirds of the way into his video. And he's going to go into a slow-motion uh, pour here. And you can see his setup, right? He's got... Uh, he's got the glass in front of his mold. He's got it clamped together. You can see he's also got, uh, right in this area right here, he's got a foam plug uh, in his basin. Sorry, in his sprue. The basin behind, is behind that. And, you know, there's a ridge. You can see right across behind that plug, there's a ridge. So he's going to fill the basin. It's going to come up. It's going to come over the top, and it's going to hit that foam plug, uh, and it'll dissolve the foam plug. You'll see the metal come down the runner, come across the mold, um, and and fill and fill the pattern here. So let's go ahead and start this. I'm going to pause it. I said I'm going to pause it here in a couple of places. Here comes the metal. Misses his, misses his basin. You can see it filling in the basin first, and it's going to come up and over the top of the um, the ridge. Now I'm going to stop it right there. First thing to notice about this thing is. The foam plug is still in there. That metal has not melted the foam plug. I would have thought it would have been instantaneous. But watch how long it seems to take that, um, that plug to melt. All right, here we go. Now, the, the plug has started to melt. I just paused it again. And you can see here the, um, uh, the smoke that's coming down along the side here. Uh, of, of the thing and right behind it I'm going to go just a few more frames right behind it you're going to start to see the metal fill the uh, fill the sprue and right there right in the back edge of the sprue you can see the metal starting to come down behind uh, you still see that smoke sort of leading the charge um, but his, his the, the plug has started to dissolve and he's got the uh, the metal coming in now we're going to go a couple more frames and stop it again Right there, stop. All right, so now we've hit the bottom of the sprue. We've already turned the corner, and we're kind of across this cylindrical uh, place here in the in the um, in the pattern. Notice first of all, notice that his sprue is completely full. He has no air entering the system uh, up above. His ridge is full. Is, the metal's full over the ridge. It's full coming into the uh, sprue. He's not sucking any air down into this into this mold at all from the top. It's all full. He's got a completely, as they would call it, a pressurized system now. Everything is his his metal has filled the sprue and the runner to this point. Now, here's the other thing that's interesting to watch, and I'm just going to go a couple of frames at a time here. Look at this leading edge of the metal and see what it's doing. You see it's kind of got a little bit of it looks to have a little bit of an upward slant to it. Watch this. Did you see the way that happened? The way that it, uh, we just did a couple of frames, it comes up and over and right now where I've got it paused again, uh, you can see it entering, entering that last chamber and you can again, you can see the metal has kind of leapt over the top of those ridges. Uh, it doesn't happen for very long, but it doesn't, the metal doesn't come in and do this, right? The metal comes across 
and then comes down into it. He's got a two inch tall, two inch tall sprue. And look at how fast that metal is flowing through this mold. It is just racing through there. All right. Now the next important part is, and this is where the surge is going to happen. First, I let me back up. This little, this little thing of the metal, you see the metal launching out over. Uh, Campbell in his book describes that as jetting, where the metal will actually is moving so quickly that it will come through something and it will jet through it and kind of have a stream of metal just flashed, sent out into space, as it were, uh, in, the, in the mold. Um, the surge is going to help, not that, not going to help that. But let me show you what happens next. Where's my play button? Okay, now, you see what happens with the metal. The metal has come across, it's hit the back wall, and look at, look at what we've got going now. We've got a buildup of metal at the back, so that metal is hit, and it's starting to come back on itself, and it's, and it's built this reflective wave that's going to happen, and you can start to see it there. The, the wave has hit the back wall, and it's getting ready to come back on itself. See the way it's filling? You see the way it's coming in and it's filling backwards. It's coming back over the top. Um, that is the reflection off this surge that we're going we're gonna to try to deal with with these spin traps or this surge filter. And then it fills to the end, and there you go. It, um, and I'm going to stop it right there. If you want to see what happens next, which is fascinating. <laughs> Not fascinating, it's fun though. <laughs> if you want to see what happens next? Go check out Andy's video. So, let me put some pen and paper here, and we're going to show you again what's happening. All right, let me let me draw uh, a variant of, of Andy's system here. So we got a basin that's going to have a ridge, and it's going to come down through a sprue. He's got a he's got a runner that comes across, but his runner is also his gate right into his part, and he had a he had a kind of a, a part that was. I can't remember how it was exactly shaped, but it was something like this, right? Where it had it had some bumps in it and whatever. So he fills his metal uh, in here, comes in this port, it fills in his basin, and as it fills up, it fills his sprue. And it, when it comes down through here, this his sprue was full almost instantly, as we saw. That metal hits this bottom, and it essentially is jetting at this point. It is racing across the bottom of his mold. It came in here, it jumped across the first ridge, and then we see it settle down in here pretty quickly. Same thing, it comes across, jets across this guy, starts to fill in pretty quickly, but it does still leap across. It hits this back wall, this hard stop on the edge of his, um, uh, on the edge of his pattern. That metal then, has nowhere to go except back on itself. It reflects off of that wall. Just as if you threw a tennis ball against a wall, it's going to bounce back at you. The metal is doing the same thing. It's going to hit that back wall and it's going to come back. What we saw happen there was a wave start to form here. And when we stopped the video, it kind of looked like that. That wave then keeps coming back and back and back. And that's what we saw filling. And it's, it's just this this notion of the metal coming down, hitting that wall, and turning back on itself. And if you read through any of Campbell's stuff, it's this idea of metal folding in on itself, one of the things that causes bifilms to happen and causing turbulence. So, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, I bled through. <laughs> the system that I've got, where is my mold, my pattern? Right here. This is a system that I got, and I didn't design this. This came out of, out of Campbell's book as well. Um, at least the, the concept did. Is this right here. So what's going to happen is now I've got this runner coming across. This is a top view. And the metal is going to come shooting down through here. We already know it's going to come racing through there, jetting through this, this channel. Rather than hitting a hard stop here at the end, we're going to put a tangential um, surge trap, call it that, a cylindrical surge uh, trap at the end of this thing. So now when the metal comes in here, rather than hitting that hard wall and reflecting back on itself, 
it's going to come around and it's going to spin inside here. Now, it'll eventually, as the head, as it starts to build up in here, some pressure will start coming back this direction. But hopefully by that time, we've already gotten to the point where we're filling upwards now. We filled this thing up. You see I've got a little bit of a taper here as well to try to, to try to force the metal in there and keep this as full as possible so that it really can't race back on itself. So that's the intent of this surge filter is to remove that, that metal coming down, hitting that hard wall, bouncing back on itself. Now, as I said, when I get when this app, when this thing fills, it should fill across and it'll come up, it'll come up into here. One of the things I've noticed, we'll see, we're gonna pour this at the end. One of the things I've noticed is um, the vent that I put on the end of this guy only goes about so tall, whereas my vents that I put on the part come all the way to the surface. We'll see if that happens again. If it does, I'm gonna expound upon a theory I have on that as well. So let me go ahead. I'm gonna get the part rammed up. I'm gonna get it everything set. You can watch my previous video on making a belt buckle to see all that. All right, well that was, uh, again, I think that was fascinating. And Andrew, Andy, <laughs> thank you for putting those things up. If you guys haven't checked out his videos, uh, and I know you haven't because he had not had a lot of views, get over there and look at it. I will, I will link both his channel and that video uh, at the end of mine so you can, you can click on him and go follow through it and see what he's doing. Fascinating stuff. Uh, and Eddie is all about trying to figure this stuff out just like I am. So it's been kind of fun talking with him and, and trying to figure some stuff out together. Now, uh, I'm going to put up a little graph. I'm going to move right over here. This is a graph I do. I'm a marketing guy. Jason, I'm a software engineer who has turned to the dark side and gone to marketing. So I'm going to show you a marketing chart. And the reason it's a marketing chart is there really are no numbers on here. <laughs> it's not based on any data. <laughs> It's all emotional. <laughs> anyway, so let me just show you kind of where I'm at. I, you know, I'm trying to get better with better castings. And um, this is kind of my, my thought of the world here. You know, if, if on, the, on this scale here, the y-axis, you've got levels of porosity. Um, and zero being perfect, 10 being horrible. Well, I believe that as you, as we come down this, uh, if we, want to, if, we, if we start improving our pouring technique, we can get a lot of benefit um, without a lot of effort in reducing porosity. So we, the, the, the slope of the curve comes down pretty quickly. Now, there are other things that we can do uh, along the way. Uh, one of them is to uh, do things like degassing and flexing your metal and trying to get things clear there. Uh, another thing you can do is you can use clean metal. What a novel idea. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see improvement. But from what I've done, and the little bit of testing I've done, it, uh, it really is technique that's gonna get us the most bang for the buck. There is improvement, no argument, there is improvement that can be gained from those other things. Um, but um, in my mind, it's, it's, the increment is small. The increment of improvement is small uh, over what we're getting here. Now, I could be way wrong, and it could be that, you know, somebody who knows something will tell me otherwise. But uh, for right now, while I'm filming this, this is what I believe. <clears throat> well, so much for my theory on the spin trap. Or the <laughs> spin trap, ah! My surge, fill, my surge trap freezing up first because it came right to the top, just like the vent on the loop. And I forgot to vent that edge. <laughs> ah, I stick the piece in there and then I didn't cut a fit to it. Oh well. We'll cool this off and see what we get. Oh. I'm pretty happy, I think. All right, let's take a look at the uh, pour uh, really quick and then we're gonna wrap it up uh, because I gotta get ready to go on a trip. <laughs> Here's the buckle, came out pretty nice despite the fact that I have hunks of sand in there and the mold fell apart on me. I bought some cheap Petra Bond. Don't do that. It doesn't hold together. I will never buy from that vendor again. Um, 
But let's just look at this guy. Here is the, here's my hand. Here's the sprue, here's the runner coming across. You see I've got a, a curve here. Uh, the curve is based on one and a half times the radius of this, or diameter of that, rock camera. Anyway, the curve is big, but it, it's there to, to drop us down. Uh, it will come across, you see the taper here, and you see my, uh, my, surge, my surge trap. The metal should have flowed in here and, and, and surged around, reducing that, that back wave, that reflection wave that we saw in Mark and Andrew's um, uh, video. So that's how it looked. I vented, actually put a vent right here, and forgot to cut a channel for it. That being said, work on your technique. If you want to get better at this stuff, work on your technique, work on your molds. Think about what's happening inside here. Um, that's all I got to say for you. I'm going to have a great day. You do the same.